your blades or cutters will get to a stage where just trying to improve them with a diamond stone isn't going to be enough. There could well be chips in there from a very hard knot or a nail or some other contamination, or just generally they've got worn, you know, for doing a lot of work. So we need to change these cutters over. These cutters are really quick and easy to change over compared to the high speed steel ones we looked at earlier on. That's quite a skillful job. This, I can show a student pretty much this once and they've just then got it. And I'll always come back and just double check everything's okay, but this is really very straightforward. And much, much safer style of block as well, which I'll explain as we've got the taken the cutters out. I know that these cutters, these are the ones I have just improved with the slipstone actually, so I'm going to mark them up. If they've been improved with a slipstone or I've put the front bevel on them, I will tend to mark them up with a red markup before I take them out. I will put them back on the shelf and I'll know when I come back in a few weeks time if I want to do something now which needs a front bevel, I know these blades are going to be okay. These are a double sided blade. If the other side of these blades are blunt, or the side that's here which is then blunt, I'll probably tend to put a black or a blue marker on them just to say they're dull, they're dead, that's it. Uh, maybe I would use those perhaps again if I know I've got some boards which really have got the potential for some lead shot or some a screw in there or something. You know, I don't want to be putting that kind of stuff through my thickness of really, but if I've got no choice and I think there's an issue, I won't use brand new cutters they won't last any time at all, they'll be knackered straight away. I'd rather put an old pair in there, which I'm not quite so fussed about if they do get a chip in them. But for this one, I've got one, two, three, four, five grub screws to take out. It's no longer the nut or bolt, where literally you're using a spanner, which again, you can slip up the cutters and really cut yourself. This is a bit safer to undo because I'm using an Allen key and I'm away from the cutter block. Tend to start from the middle and work our way outwards and we do the same when we are tightening the cutters back up again. This holds the cutters much straighter than starting from the outside and working your way in. So I'm just alternating where I'm undoing them from. I need to undo these grub screws a fair amount. I don't want to take them out I just want to undo them enough that I can actually get the wedge bar out. Also, uh, this particular cutter block, I don't know, it was eight or nine years old, I just replaced and got new grub screws for it. I mean, they were okay, but they were just getting a little bit rounded. Last thing I'm going to do is get when it's so rounded you can't actually get it out, so I just swapped them over. Also, obviously, the threads could potentially be getting worn. You don't want to be having worn threads in here. This really has got to hold this cutter block in. You may notice as I start undoing this, there's a, there's a bit of a bang. All it is, they tend to get stuck in there with a little bit of dust that forms over time. And then once you've kind of broken that seal, they're nice to come out. If I pull this one out very carefully, and I've got my gloves on, the edges of these plain blades could be really quite sharp still. I'm All the work's happened probably in the middle and out towards here, but the ends are probably still very, very good. You don't want to slip on these. This style of cutter is much, much thinner. They're probably now only, I don't know, a millimetre and a half thick, so it's about a sort of sixteenth, something like that. They are double-edged, so they come ground on one edge and ground on the other. And they're also held on there with these location pins or dowels. So this means when we put a new cutter back on, it goes on exactly the same place as the ones that I took off. But it also means that these physically cannot slip off. They're not only being held in there by friction of doing the nuts or the grub screws up, they're physically held onto the bar. And the bar is also held in with the grub screw. When I tighten the grub screw down on here, you can see a kind of witness mark from where they've been put in over the years. But if anything wasn't totally tightened down, as soon as we turn the block on, everything's going to want to slip out as it slips or try to slip out, the grub screw would get tighter and tighter on this wedge shape. So a lot, lot safer. Also, these are set up that the maximum projection between the edge of the cutter and the block is 1.1 millimetres, which again is only just over a kind of 25th of an inch. It's pretty small. 
that means these also, if you ever were to come in contact with the cutter block, it will take quick cuts, but minimal cuts, more like a bacon slicer, which makes these blocks really quite safe. On the block, it's also written on here, the maximum speed of the block, which is 6,000 RPM, and it also says MAN, M-A-N, means you can manually feed timber over and into the machine using guards, but you can manually feed timber. So changing over these blades, I could probably do all three of these blades in five to 10 minutes. This is a three knife block, as opposed to the kitty, which was a two knife block. My Felder planer is a four knife block, and I could have had that as an option as a six knife block. The more knives in the block, the better quality finish you will get, as long as they are all in the same cutting circle. If, for one, for some reason or another, one of these blades was lower than the other two in the block, then we can make an adjustment on that. In the wedge bar, there's some smaller grub screws. Allen key goes in there as I wind that grub screw out. It pushes out, pushes the wedge bar up, pushes the cutter up, and therefore we can adjust the cutters up and down. These can basically factory set and there should be no need for you to reset them, and I generally wouldn't. I would only reset them if you probably had to reset your outfeed table if you had a surface planer, or you had an issue with a thickness planer and your bed, for some reason, had moved. If the bed had moved, first thing I would do is actually check it's still secure and nothing's come loose, but maybe some of it's getting worn, in which case you'd need to readjust this wedge bar and cutter to suit your table. You'd have to basically put this in here safely, do some test cuts and measure what the timber is coming out size-wise, perhaps the front of the cutter block or the back, and then adjust these on the screws to suit that operation.